So um, I'm a non-exec at three, two, three, four digital agencies. Um, I used to have a digital agency, I used to be a founder and director of a digital agency. We grew to 35, I got completely fed up, annoyed, and it stopped becoming fun, so I left. Um, I, I'm a trustee of a mental health charity, which is very close to my heart, I'm very passionate about that. Um, I work with some direct clients as well, corporate clients. I've done a bit of work for Simply Health in the past. Um, in terms of trying to improve customer experiences. Okay, so in my experience of working with corporates and small and medium startups, companies that get this succeed, fundamental. Companies that understand uh, that humans and customers are not commodities, they are not um, lines in a database, they are not um, anything other than individuals with their own fears, desires, concerns, anxieties, and worries ultimately succeed. So there was a jeans company um, called Hyatt Denim. Has anyone heard of Hyatt Denim? Yeah? They make ridiculously expensive jeans. Right? I don't always tell my wife how much they cost. Mm -hmm. um, they treat people like humans. So very, very briefly, they, have, um, they make their jeans by hand. In, in West Wales, it used to be uh, a community that used to make jeans for Mark and Spencer. Mark and Spencer said, we're all taking that to China because it's cheaper. These two individuals bought the factory and they are now creating 400 jobs in the local community making jeans. They've come at it from an ethical and more an individual perspective. Now, they're about two or 300 quid pair of jeans, right? Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Again, so you can see why I keep it quiet from my wife. But they're putting the pride and the emotion back into their community. And people like me, you might call me suckers like me, are going, that touches me as an individual. I've got loyalty with that brand. They have got me for life. I will never buy another pair of jeans until they sell the company to Replay or Diesel or something like that. They understand people as humans and individuals. They don't look at them as lines in a database. They might not be profitable for 10 years, <laughs> but they've got people like me in, and I will quite happily pay a few quid for a pair of jeans. And companies that don't get it, companies that don't understand humans and don't understand um, customers and what people need, chuck digital, digital solutions in the way. TSB, right? Okay. Can I swear? Yeah. Completely fucked up the last 15 years of their strategy. Because what they, you might cut that out, Lee. <laughs> so what, what they basically did is they thought, do you know what humans and customers need? They need some nice marketing. They need a nice little app that we can navigate through. Yeah, don't worry about that big burning database we've got behind us that can be completely ripped into by any hackers and it's going to fall apart at any stage. We'll just put some nice stuff around the outside and no one will notice. Well, they did notice and now people are leaving in their droves. They thought digital was a solution to a fundamental problem. Right? Couldn't most of you go and work somewhere else? Dare I say for some of the competitors in the market who might not have the same morals as you guys have got, I would hope. I know a couple of you have come from such <laughs> businesses in the past. So you're here to make things better for people, right? Yeah, please say yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. So you'll find, you'll find a few little things in me. I'm not going to test at the end, but you'll find a few little things about me and what I like in there. Like I said, digital is as much of a problem as a solution to some of the issues we're finding. So this guy, and I'll give you little, little um, uh, people who inspire me throughout, and I really recommend you read some of these guys' stuff. So this guy's called Tom Goodwin, okay? Uh, head of digital and innovation at Zenith Media. Never heard of Zenith Media, but I've heard of him. Um, he's a really, really smart strategist in the world of customers, uh, corporates, and digital. We've all heard of blockchain voice, chatbots, blah, 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 right? Um, probably 70% of the companies I work with come to me and say, we want to use blockchain, we want to use voice, we want to use chatbots. They, they don't go, we've kind of got a problem, we don't know what to do about it. They go to the solution first. So they go, okay, we've got to use voice, right? Because voice is, an, everyone's got an Alexa, so we've got to use it. Um, and they forget just to create simple products. Humans are really simple, apart from the people in this room, stupid, um, change-intolerant creatures. And 
if we throw technology in front of them and complex products and um, complex language, they're just going to go, I'm not interested, back off. There's a reason Amazon haven't changed their design on their website for 10 years. There's a reason Google just have a one bar on their search engine. They get people are simple. They don't like change, and they know what they do. But what, how many products have you seen in the marketplace that confuse you, frustrate you, annoy you? Health insurance for me. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't understand it. I almost bought a Simply Health cash plan the other day. Almost. And I thought, oh, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm getting. So I went for Vitality, and I thought, I don't like pink. So I went to some, you know, and I don't like sausage dog. I don't get that. Um, I was just confused. Just list out what you can do for me. I'll give you a little bit of my information. I'll tell you I'm 22 years old and uh, live in Saint Tropez and all this kind of stuff. But I'll tell you what it is about me if you give me simplicity. And again, that's something that the best companies start to do. So this, um, Bill Hicks, some of you younger ones don't know who Bill Hicks is, right? Okay. This was in the 70s. He was absolutely sick to the back teeth of banality. So this slide is to try and show you, yeah, we want simplicity, but stand up for something, use technology, use what you've got to be different. Don't bore people to death. And that's what technology has, is at risk of doing, it's at risk of boring people to death. So let's just show you some, some examples of what, what's going on. So this is a little bit old, but I think it's still relevant. You know these guys, right? That was a complete shit shower, wasn't it? Really. But that was on the cards for, I did something with Facebook about four or five years ago. That was on the cards then. They were not in control. They are not in control of your data. Whatever they say, it is all over the place. Okay? This has been happening for years. The fact of the matter is, it was an upper class guy who was running Cambridge Analytica and the media went after him. There are people like me who, despite my, my, my accent, are not upper class, who are ripping data off left, right and centre. But I think this will, um, might take a bit of time, but it will fundamentally have an effect on pe companies understanding who humans are and how to treat them. Uh, there's the surveillance economy, have you heard that phrase before? Yeah? No, yeah? Okay, really quickly, it's businesses that make their money out of data. Google, Facebook, primarily, right? Amazon have got, they sell you shit, right? You just buy more shit and we'll sell it. Facebook and Amazon, and Facebook and Google use your data. Now what's going to start to happen is that people are going to start to pull back from giving Facebook and Google their data, right? You've got ad blockers already. Have any of you changed your behaviour even slightly since this came out on Facebook? Yes. Yeah. So some of you have, some of you haven't, right? All it takes is for some people to do that, and Facebook's value to their advertisers and companies drops. So what you'll start to see, if you haven't seen it already, Facebook are asking you lots of different questions, or Facebook's platform and sponsors are asking you lots of different questions in lots of different ways because they've seen a drop off in the data gathering and now they're starting to pick it back up again. Don't give them anything. I'm, I, I'm, I, when, I started working, well, when I started working for them, I came off Facebook. So I could just see what they were, what they were doing. So the effect will be is that um, personalisation will become less important for individuals. Now that sounds counterintuitive to what I've just said. But they're not going to be, you, people will start to behave in a different way. They'll go, actually, I don't want to see things that are perfect for me on Amazon or information that's perfect for me because I'm not willing to give that data up to see that. I'll just go and find it myself. Does that make sense? I don't want it in my feed. I'll just go and find it because I'm not comfortable with that transaction. So that's something to bear in mind for you guys. People might not be so willing to give you data, even if you say you can be more accurate with your quotes or more accurate with your information. They might go, no, that's okay. I can find that out myself. So you're going to have less to go on in terms of what individuals are doing and how they behave. A new tech will be truly user focused and I'll show you some examples on that at the end of the deck. So we play tricks on people, don't we, right? Southwest trains are a fucking abomination. <coughs> just, they've cost me thousands over the last six months. We've all seen this, right? We all, do you get Southwest trains, right? And what do they do when you try and sign into their Wi-Fi? They tick one box that they want you to tick and they don't tick another box that they want you to untick. Make sense? That's trying to trick people, right? They're, they're actually trying to trick people. This. 
This is a digital company who go, we're more than just numbers, and then they show you a shitload of numbers. And, then <laughs> and we, we, we're like, oh yeah, that's funny. So that's another thing about me. So this is really, pa I'm really passionate about this. So we treat uh, empathy and authenticity as a, as, a, as a commodity. If I hear one more person say to me, uh, we need our brand to be more authentic, I'll cry. Should be, should, that's your fucking starting point. Not being, not becoming authentic. I don't know if you can see the thing at the, thing at the bottom. So it says empathy. Um, yeah, I can see that how that could be useful. So I, I, I've worked with some companies who monetize empathy. We've got to become more authentic. No, 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 that's your starting point. Then you work on everything else. So you might not be able to see this. So one of the outcomes of Facebook and Google and um, Cambridge Analytica, and this is from an American, this is from the New Yorker, I think. So basically the guy's saying, oh, this lemonade's only 50 cents, huh? Well, I guess the real profit's made when you collect my data and sell it to the government, mm -hmm. right? That's what Facebook will do. My favourite company <coughs> again. So, so this is Southwest Trains, right? And what they have done is they said, our service is so shit, if you create a compensation claim account, you can make it easier for all the times you claim money off us because we're so shit. They're not going, we've got to sort our bloody trains out. We're going, we'll make it easier for you because we know our service is shit. We're not going to focus on that. We're going to build a website that enables you to claim easier. This is everywhere. You've, you've all got examples of this, right? This is everywhere. And we're just going, yeah, yeah. Because they're dehumanising us. AI. This was in the FT, I think, FT or the Economist. So, can you see? If you can see the screen, can you see the, the glaring disrespect on this slide from the Economist? How to make it look more caring? Not being Bingo. Caring. How can AI make you look more caring? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> People are getting paid millions of pounds for this. <coughs> The purpose of this piece is, for heaven's sake, in your thinking, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing in Simile Health, whatever you're, don't fall into this trap. Don't fall into this trap of techies and people that really don't care managing your behaviour <laughs> when you've got control over how your customers are treated. Um, my jeans company again, they shut their online shop on uh, Black Friday, is it? Because they were like, we're not getting involved in this. It's nuts. They just went, we're shutting down. You can't buy anything from us on Black Friday. I was just in love with them even more. And I was just like, I don't, what do I need? They're going, we're not going to discount our jeans anyway, right? So we're not going to open our shop. Don't get involved. Have you heard about this? Yeah? <coughs> Who has heard about this? No? Okay, so this was a startup that. Um, said we can create Instagram profiles for you that make it look like your life is fantastic. <laughs> right. How many likes do you think this got on social media? Many of us. Million? Yeah. Oh, millions. Yeah. Tens of millions. It was fake. It was set up by an agency just to see how people reacted. <laughs> so people are going, this is fantastic, I love this, what a great idea. People are going, I want to invest in it, this is brilliant. You're going to create fake profiles for people and they're going to pay you for it. Brilliant. And then the agency went, they didn't think, they were like, this is just an idea. And they just went, this is nuts. It was fake. How do you think people reacted? Do you think they were angry? Just pointed. Yeah, they were like... Oh my God, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can see, this, the point of this is, my God, aren't we just ruining people's lives potentially with digital? So there are some good, so that was good news, believe it or not, because we were like, we'll take the piss out of people and bad news came over because we were like, we're doomed, right? Yeah. Never mind climate change, we're going to finish ourselves before. But this, this is some good stuff. So this is something I'm talking to, Lou, to Lou and the innovation guys about. So there's some good stuff coming out of it. So one of the staff, so I've been so involved in a couple of startups either, did I? I mean, did I? Okay. Um, one of the startups is a uh, mental health app, and uh, it's a platform that will monitor, not in a creepy way, I won't bore you with it, um, people's digital footprint. 
and it will identify early signs of anxiety, stress and mental health problems. Could be something as simple as you're answering emails outside of your normal hours, like three o'clock in the morning, well that's quite an obvious sign of stress. Um, it might also be that when I say mile in an email, I used to say thanks, cheers, all the best at the end of it, and I've just left that off now. There's a little bit, there's a trigger there. So it's based on really complicated behavioural science. But this is a good thing, right? This is a platform that could help people identify early onset mental health issues. Good, right? I hope, it's good. People are giving us money for it, so it's got to be good. <laughs> new economy, another startup I'm involved with is um, enabling local journalists to sell um, news articles directly to the public. Spotify for news. Yeah. Fake news is everywhere. People are starting. Do, does anyone here pay for content on news? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So I do. I pay to get news from trusted sources. And people are starting to do that now because they're fed up with the fake news economy. That was AI talking to a hairdresser. <coughs> that wasn't human. That was Google allegedly talking to an independent hairdresser and making a booking using AI and the hairdresser. And the other one was, didn't know they were talking to a computer. Now you can think that's great, you can think that's creepy, but if you think about people who might not be able to articulate themselves properly, think about people who have got speech impediments who are low in confidence, self-esteem, that could be a life changer for them. Here's another one. I did some work with um, Dorset County Council, uh, which is where I live. Um, so that's pretty cool, right? We'd, I think we'd all agree that's pretty cool. So it's not all bad, but when we focus using technology in the right way, in the right form, and focus on humans, Christ, it's a different place, isn't it? Just a bit on voice, really quickly. So I do a lot of work with voice, and um, one of my clients is working with Amazon, funny enough, um, who have just thrown money at it, which is a bit against my, anyway. Voice will be the next big thing in technology. My, my, my belief, far before a AR, far before VR, far before AI, I think in many ways. Um, but there's a long way to go, right? So 10% of homes in the UK have a voice speaker at the moment. I'm just digressing slightly, just to give a bit of context. Who in here's got a voice activated mm -hmm. speaker? Yeah, probably more, than, probably more than that. Pardon? Three. About three, yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe 30, 40%, so it's definitely growing. Um, mainly listen to music mainly ask general questions, set alarms, reminders, all that kind of stuff. Um, once organisations can start to work out, and actually I don't think it's that hard, how they can help people interact with them using their voice in terms of getting services, you know, simply have to go, you know, I want to make a claim on my cash plan, what do I do? I've had an accident. You know, that kind, that kind of thing, just to take that pressure away of people having to go to a website or go to an app or open it up. Once you start dealing with people in their own environment, it's much easier to do. We did a, we did a test or some research as part of this. Um, people found it, this is for a contact centre, people found it easier to talk to their Alexa than they did to talk to a human in a contact centre at the other end of the country. They felt closer to the business. Now they felt closer to the business because it was in their living room. <laughs> And Marjorie was in Edinburgh normally, it's normally in Scotland, isn't it? It's in Edinburgh. That's kind of AI. Marjorie's a real person, but people felt more comfortable doing that. So if we can kind of encourage people to use technology in the right way, then we're on to something. Um, demographics, I've just given my mum, my mum's, bless her, she's 75. Um, so I've just given her my Google Mini and said, look, talk to it, play with it. That's, uh, and she shouts at it, like she used to shout at me when I was a kid. <laughs> hey Google! I'm like, Mum, easy, gentle, be gentle with it. It doesn't like being shouted at. <laughs> um, but she's using it to get the radio out, she's using it to find out what the weather's going to be like. Sunny um, at the moment. But the demographic's quite interesting, and, and this is quite recent data, so it's in the States, but you know, what's interesting is, is over 60s, and I know simply health with their, the age demographic of their customers. It's quite an interesting way to look at it. Anyway, a little bit more about me. That's what I feel like with customers sometimes. <sighs> okay. Um, it's easy for startups to take all this human focus, take this humane technology in, and develop a product and services around it. Because you can move quite quickly, you haven't got the overhead, you're not, you haven't got 10,000 mortgages to pay, 
you haven't got people's livelihoods on the line, their families. Um, it's a lot more difficult for large companies to do it, but it's not impossible. And in my random rambling experience, there's two ways that businesses such as Simply Health can, can adopt humane approaches to technology. You either digitally transform or you digitally digitise. And there's a subtle difference between the two. By the way, all big change directors will say they're all the same thing, but they're not. Sorry for this really bad diagram. Okay, so within any business, there are um, broadly five different types of, five levels of services and five levels of focus. There's the business mission, there's the processes that support that business mission, there's the products that come off the back of that, there's a load of marketing, and there's a load of PR and advertising. Does that make sense at the moment? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not creative, so, so Lee's going, what the hell does that look like? Um, <coughs> Most companies, TSB included, focus on advertising and PR and marketing, without fail. They go, oh, this digital thing's really cool, brilliant, let's create a campaign of some advertising and marketing and PR around it, and it'll succeed, and people will love us, and then we'll work out what we're going to do with the goodwill and the customers on the back of it. Right? TSB forgot about their business mission, their processes and their products, because their systems were falling through the floor money was getting lost, people's data was being hacked left, right and centre, and they forgot about what was called. They forgot about the customer at the middle. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you could look around um, some of your competition, dare I say, um, <laughs> and you could see that they're focusing on the blue, the, the dark blue and the light blue stuff, advertising and PR and marketing. Do you reckon? You could probably mention, you could probably think of one or two customers who sponsor football stadiums and that kind of stuff. But Now the problem is, is that we, corporate organisations, go, yeah we've got this new technology, we're not changing anything about our business, just make it work, okay? So we've got voice, we've got to make voice work, we've got to make the new CRM system work, we've got to make the new website work, right? We've said that here, haven't we? So I don't know that, but we have said that here, haven't we? Right? Got to make it work. We're not going to change any structure. We're not going to refocus our business. We're not going to give people more autonomy. We're not going to let people drive their own change. We're just going to do it. And you're all going to fit in. And it's going to be great. And we're going to employ a big change transformation boss who's going to say everything's fine and then we're going to sack him in six months' time and bring someone else in. Right? I'm not saying that happened here. Or happens here. But that's the way businesses work, right? They work like this all over the world. Um, and the problem is we are scared as corporate organisations to fundamentally change. That's the basic principle of it. We are terrified of changing. <coughs> but you can, we can make a change. So there's three ways of doing it, in my experience. Self-disruption, reinvention and measured bets. Okay? They're all equally valid. Now, the way that they should work is bottom up. You start with the bottom one, you work your way through and then you self-disrupt. You've got to be in a strong position to self-disrupt. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, so the way you focus your self-disruption on, the way you focus your transformation on, is enhancing the customer experience. I do shitloads of work in customer experience, not just online but offline as well. And again, the businesses that succeed get the balance right between data. You, you, must, have, you, you must have so much data on your customers, right? That's what, you've probably got data on me and I've only just browsed your website. Or Ryland's probably captured it somewhere <laughs> and hiding it somewhere. But data only tells you what people have done, doesn't tell you what they're going to do. I don't care, you can analyse the arse of it, you can build trends of it. You don't know what people are going to do because we are conflicted, we are ignorant and aware, we are inspired and inspiring. You don't know what I'm going to, you don't know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> do you? I don't know what you're going to do next. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! Don't get, don't get me started on right. Sorry, digression. I do this a lot. Digression, right? The way we talk about people, we we target them, right? We set attributes to them. We retarget them, right? We sound like we're going to kill them. We don't. We don't want them to be customers. We want to hurt them. We're targeting this sector. Cough, you're not targeting me. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, we, you know we, we, we're pushing through a funnel. Sounds like they're going to Guantanamo Bay, right? <laughs> not 
We're not trying to, we don't want them to be our customers, we want them to be scared of us. Yeah, oh God, retar retargeting basically is your marketing hasn't worked, has it? <laughs> so we're going to retarget you. No, it didn't work first time, don't do the same shit. Mm. Anyway. Um, so, so data is, is a retrospective look. Sorry, this diagram is really bad, but I sketched it out and I just thought it worked. Um, creative is where it comes in. Now, creative businesses really, and I don't just mean making the website look nice or making an app work well. It's really thinking about the human interactions and where people are going in the future. If you can take your data and you can take a good creative angle, blend it together, you get really good, strong customer experiences. Their website, my, my, my jeans company website, is really beautiful, it's really simple, it's really straightforward. When I bought them jeans, I sent them an email, I got a personal email back, I made some flippant remark about being old and being, not being cool enough for their jeans. And they come back and said, we, 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 we accommodate all ages and all types. And I was just like, ah, oh. ah. Oh. Then they shut their shop on Black Friday, and now they're doing a programme where they are paying people to, to, to wear in their jeans. So you sign up, they'll send you a pair of 300 pound jeans, you wear them in for a bit, and then they'll you send them back, they'll give you 20 quid, and they'll sell them. <laughs> right? But they're just trying it, they're just going to see if it works. And it's just creating more, more loyalty. So, so the balance between, getting the balance right between being creative, coming up with stupid ideas, there's no such thing as a stupid question or a stupid idea, looking at the billions of lines of data you've got, but come bringing them together in an experience that's fulfilling for, for people is the key. The amount of digital agencies, and Tom's probably come across millions of these, that's why he hates so many of them, mm -hmm. who focus on one or the other is amazing, right? We've seen a few of them. We met at one of them, probably, didn't we? So, can you remember my little diagram? Self-disruption. So, create a new business. Um, really, really, really kind of simple questions there, right? So Nokia got taken over by a company that made computers. They weren't interested in phones at all. Then they just thought, let's just give a phone a go. Tesla thought, well, we'll make a car. We're a load of engineers, right? We don't really know what we're doing. We're interested in batteries, but we'll, let's just make a car. I mean, let's send a rocket into space and let's do all this other shit. It's worth a go. Let's get creative. Amazon don't make any money out of me and you buying tea towels. They make money on the fact that they host two thirds of every website in the world. They host Netflix. So every film you watch on Netflix, Amazon get a cut. That's why, that is why their, um, uh, the products they actually own themselves is going through the floor and their profits are going up. They don't hold any, con they don't hold any, any um, products in their warehouses really. They don't own it. They just sell it out, move it out. Have you heard of lemonade? Yeah. They're good, right? <laughs> they are really good. They can pay their claims in three seconds. Ish. But they are a load of techies who thought, ah, oh, this insurance market's falling apart in the States, let's jump in and get on, get on the band market. And they, you know, they got 30% of the, yeah, they're smart, right? Um, Booking.com. They don't, you know, the old, you've heard the old phrase, they don't own any hotel rooms, but they're the biggest hotel company in the world. They've understood, they put themselves at the front of that funnel and thought, we're going to give people a better customer experience, and then we, we don't give, they don't give a shit if you have a good holiday or not, they don't care. But they're the biggest flat name in the holiday industry. And Tesla <coughs> achieved more in three years than NASA in 30. And they just they said, well, I've got the money, let's send a rocket out to space, and let's land it. And then we'll put it on social media, and everyone will go, wow, that's amazing. And they'll buy more cars. They've sold more cars since they sent their rockets into space than they did before. People. <laughs> Does that make sense then? So self disrupt. Yeah? Facebook bought Instagram for a billion quid, a billion dollars. How much is Instagram worth now? Right? The reason they bought me is they were terrified of what they were doing. So I was in a, in a secondary school the other day, some, just chatting to some of the kids, and oh, yeah, we're not on Facebook. Yeah, they haven't got my data. I'm on Instagram. Well, well, they are Instagram. Oh, well, I'll go on WhatsApp then. No, 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 hold on. They are WhatsApp. <laughs> so, 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 so they are looking at ways that they can get ahead of the game. 
bottom one's an interesting one. Microsoft are growing quicker than Apple. Now, what Microsoft have fundamentally done is they've gone, we are not fighting them lot. We're not fighting. Apple are too cool. Amazon are too big. Except Google and Facebook are too, are seen as too um, big brotherish. We're going to get out of it. Their profits are going up quicker than the other four. Hugely. They bought LinkedIn recently, about a year ago. They've bought um, a games platform. You know, they're buying lots of companies that are, uh, we use on a day-to-day -day basis. You use Microsoft products here, right? Yeah. Okay, I use LinkedIn, that's Microsoft. I've got a phone that's powered by Microsoft. You know, it, they're, they're everywhere, but no one sees them. So that's really interesting. So they're constantly reinventing themselves. They are, they are the fourth, fifth biggest company in the world. You always think it's Google, Facebook, but they're just growing. They're growing so quick. And this is where you are, I think. You've got innovation teams, right? Um, um, a lot of, lot of businesses have, don't have innovation teams at all. They put out a message on their, plat on their, on their shared network and they go, has anyone got any ideas? Yeah, I've got an idea. We'll come in and we'll do it and we'll develop it and then it won't work because we haven't invested any money or time in it and then they'll get to the blame whoever came up with the idea. So you don't come up with an idea again. You go, oh, no, I'm not doing that. I've got to travel. Bottom one. First Direct are the best bank in the country by a mile. Okay? They turned everything on their head. Someone at HSBC said, well, their chief executive at HSBC said, um, this telephone thing, this telephone banking, this, we could do money, we can make some money out of that. Just go away and set up a telephone system, see if it works. Um, if it doesn't work, we've made some good PR out of it, we've tried something out. Ironically, they didn't think the internet was ever going to take off, but that's another story. Um, their customer, customer satisfaction rates are 90 something percent. They put all their best qualified staff on the phones and all their junior staff in the back office. 93% of all customer inquiries are dealt with on the phone first time. Time after time after time. That just came from someone coming up with an idea, oh we can do this, and they said, that innovation team, off you go, go and build it. So that's what you've got to do, right? You've got to create a half a billion pound business, Tom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got an idea. Um, one of the things, uh, again, that I've seen while standing around all my different um, environments is um, it's really hard to say to um, senior managers, directors, um, we're going to do this to enhance the human aspect of our business, right? Because people see it as HR sometimes, or they see it as... As, as, as a different responsibility. And especially when you say we want to make our products and the way we interact with our customers more human. Right? They go, <coughs> yeah, 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 great, but where's the money? Um, stick with it, right? I love Roald Dahl. Just, just his storytelling and the way he brings people in is fantastic. Um, I read this about 20 years ago. I have been battered in my career. I haven't got a career, really. Um, I've been battered time after time after time. Not back, not back, not back. And um, when I've had my tiny little successes, it's been because I've just been enthusiastic and someone's gone, I know you're an idiot, but God, you're passionate about it, let's give it a go. And, and sometimes they work. And one or two of them have worked. Um, but I just always come back to that, always come back to that. So if you've got an idea about how to make technology more human. Please don't, don't hide it in a bush. You go and see Lou and speak to Lou about it and, and yeah. Okay, so this is the last slide you'll be <coughs> glad to know. Um, so I do some work with a, an American company called the Center for Humane Tech. Okay, so again, please take a look. Please take a look at it because um, it was set up by guys who work for Facebook and Google and Amazon really smart guys who thought, this is shit, we're trying to trick people into giving us their data and we're ignoring the humanity aspect of it. This is a three minute video, right? Please watch it, because it will hopefully stick in your memory. So this guy, Max, he is a, um, I suppose an actor, a, a kind of poet and that kind of stuff, and he, he produced this video. That sums up much more articulately than my rambles. What? businesses need to do to succeed. Okay? Put the phone in the pocket, don't put a bloody Fitbit on, 
because that's not enhancing anyone's life or any, anyone thinks. Phone in a pocket and make digital work for people in a better way. You are a company, a well-being company. You should be at the forefront of this. This should be in every aspect of your lives and your, your working life. You've got a great opportunity to do it. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? That's my ramble over. You'll be glad to know. You can go back to your day. <laughs> but thanks for coming. That's it. Cheers. Thank you. That's it. Come back. <laughs>